Hey y'all, welcome back to my series where I'm showing you how you can take your watercolor paintings and turn them into repeating patterns in Photoshop. Today's video is the very last video in the series and in this one I'm going to be showing you how you can recolor your artwork in Photoshop. There's this myth that it's really difficult or not really possible in Photoshop but I'm here to tell you it's totally possible and you can come up with some really cool and unique color combinations that you for sure wouldn't have thought of on your own using Photoshop's native recoloring tools. So with that, let's jump right into it. A lot of people think that you can only really easily recolor in Adobe Illustrator or some other vector-based program. And listen, it's not wrong that it is really easy to recolor things in those types of programs, but it is kind of a myth that you can't also do that in something like Photoshop. And so that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So if you haven't seen the other videos in the series, I do recommend taking a look at those just to see how I created these three different files that we're working off of today. For recoloring, I'm gonna be focused on my actual repeat tile file. So again, that one is called forest floor block if you watch my previous videos. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create a big raster of all of my motifs. So you may remember that each of these are individual motifs on their own separate layers. And I'm gonna keep that, I don't wanna get rid of those, but for recoloring, it's gonna be easier if I just put everything onto one layer and raster it. So with this entire motifs group selected, I'm going to hit command J to duplicate it. And then with that copy selected, I'll hit command E to merge it. Now this is merged into one rasterized layer. So I'm going to turn off the original and I'm going to rename this copy to original. So those motifs, I'm going to keep safe and sound, but all the recoloring is going to happen on these actual rasterized layers. So this original version, we're going to leave untouched. We like to keep the original. So I touched on this in a previous video, but in case you missed that, one of the easiest ways that we can actually recolor in Photoshop doesn't actually involve any of these motifs at all, but just involves changing the background color. And so we pulled these up in a separate video. The way I did this was by clicking on this new fill layer icon here and then click solid color. With this, you're able to pick whatever color you'd like. So I'm gonna bring this down and just like that, you can see, all right, we've got a different background color. So this one we might call something like, I don't know, sage, olive, somewhere along those lines. Folks are probably more interested in the actual recoloring of the motifs themselves. To start, I'm gonna turn off pattern preview. We don't need it for this. And then I'm gonna make a copy of this original raster file, command J. This is the one that we'll play with our first kind of new colorway. And so the way that I like to do this is you can hit command U to open the hue and saturation tool. And then we can just kind of go to town with this hue toggle here. So if you drag this around, you can see just like that, we are getting totally different color spectrums for um, our pattern here. So this tool might allow you to see combinations that you might not have thought about otherwise. Like this one here, this one gives me like fairy tale vibes. Um, and I definitely didn't have that in mind when I painted it, but it's kind of fun, right? So if you're happy with a color combination that comes out of just changing these hues across the board, you can just hit okay. And then what I'll often do is I'll rename that layer based on whatever the vibe is. So sometimes that'll be really practical. Like I'll call it like, red blue or something like that. For this one, I'm gonna call it fairy tale because that's the vibes that it gives me. <laughs> so fairy tale. Now I'm gonna work off of that original file again. You certainly don't have to, you could work off this fairy tale if you wanted, but I'm just gonna duplicate that original again and we can play with another colorway using the same technique. So we'll hit command U again. And this time I liked the ones that were somewhere over here. Yeah, this one kind of all the way to the left here. This one gives me nighttime, dusk, kind of midnight vibes. And so I think that's one that I'll save as well. So I'll hit okay, and I'll call this midnight. Something that's really fun and that I really didn't know that you could do until relatively recently is that it's also possible to target specific types of color within your Photoshop document and just change those. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna make another copy of this original. We'll bring it to the top. And in this one, let's try and change only these kind of blue mushrooms and let's see how that works. So we're gonna hit Command U to open up the hue and saturation panel again. And now instead of going with this kind of default 
master here, if you click this, we can select all of the different kind of color families or color groups here. And so these mushrooms definitely fall into the cyan category. And so I'm going to select that. And with that selected now, we can see Photoshop has automatically kind of defined this range of cyan. And so it's this lighter gray box. It splits over to both sides, so it's a little hard to see. But you can see that Photoshop is saying, okay, this is what I'm calling cyan. And with that selected, we can play with this hue panel again. And just like that, we are only changing the color of those cyan mushrooms, which is so exciting. I really didn't know that this was possible until pretty recently. And so you could certainly, you know, for example, here they are a little bit more green than they were before if we wanted really kind of green vibes or turn them the same kind of reddish pink that those flowers are or something kind of more dramatic like the purple. So that's really fun. I'm gonna cancel that because I, I like the way they are and they're cyan, but you can imagine we can do the same thing with any of the other colors. So for example, we could try those yellow flowers. Now, the thing is that a lot of the greens that I use in this painting also have a lot of yellow in them. And so if I were to just take this at face value, you'll see when I change this hue and saturation, we're also changing a lot of the mushrooms and the ferns that aren't exactly yellow, but they have yellow tones in them. So what we can do to kind of address this is a couple things. First, this is the yellow range that Photoshop has defined. But what we can do is use this eyedropper tool and we can click on one of these flowers to say, this is actually what I am calling yellow in this piece of artwork. The other thing we can do is that as we were seeing before, everything else that was changing that we didn't really want to change was in the green, the kind of greeny yellows. And so we can kind of shorten this what it's catching on the green end as much as possible and make sure we're really only catching things in the yellow realm. We can do the same on the red side if we want to really narrow that realm. And so in doing that, you can see just like that, we have targeted those true yellows a lot better. <laughs> now they look like little watermelons. <laughs> So I hope you found that really helpful. You've officially made it to the very end of this series. If you've watched every video in this series, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I really can't wait to see what you're able to make using your watercolor paintings in Photoshop. So I would love to see the patterns that you create. So if you do end up posting these on Instagram, for example, go ahead and tag me at Peppa Studios. Or if you're not on social media or not quite ready to share them, you can send me an email at hello at peppostudios.com and I would love to cheer you on. <laughs> So with that, thank you very much for watching this one. If you enjoyed this series, you may also enjoy this video right here where I walk you through my surface pattern design progress over the course of seven months. All right, thanks for watching and take care everyone.